everybody. I have been waiting to make this video for quite some time, at least a couple of months. I've kind of been putting it off. A uh, very highly requested video to talk about how I keep the RV cool, specifically on the road as I travel, and also to talk a little bit about security. And I think there's a way to combine the two together to make one video that's gonna help a lot of other RVers out there, as well as give you enough information so that you can go out on your own and make your own decision, but also bearing in mind that my security and my safety in the RV uh, needs to be protected. So at times I'm not gonna be able to give you all of the specifics that you might think you need to know, but believe me, I'm gonna give you enough information to, for you to be able to get it done yourself without um, harming or risking my own safety. So let's start with how I keep the RV cool in a number of different ways here. I will start off by saying we are here in July of 2017 and it is normally my goal, normally my goal to chase 70 degrees around the country, north to south, east to west, wherever I'm at. It's my goal to chase 70 degrees. Obviously that does not work very often. Today here in Missouri, it is 95 degrees. I am also plugged into power right now for this demonstration. I am going to be running the air conditioner a lot during this video, but I also want to show you the other ways that I have to keep cool. So we'll start with keeping cool. So I own three of these cheap Lasco Walmart version $14 20-inch box fans. They are not DC operated fans. They are 110 volt fans. On high, they run 0.8 amps. So it's, it's less than one amp to operate one of these fans at a time. Now my battery bank itself is very custom here. Underneath the step to the door right here is a place for two batteries, and that's just the start. Those two batteries are also linked parallel with the others, which are stored here in this compartment underneath the oven. Right next door is my 750 watt uh, power inverter. Plugged in right here, this outlet goes around and gives me a normal looking outlet right here with two USB ports and now three normal looking 110 volt plugs. But these plugs are being inverted from DC power to AC power. That's why I'm able to plug my fans into here. I also have another wire going from here which controls this large mess of electronics up here. All of the stuff powered here and behind this shelf here are all powered by DC inverted power into AC. So I do not ever need to be plugged in. My solar panels up on the roof are basically what charge the batteries enable me to have power wherever. So let's pretend that we're not plugged into power right now and it's a nice 70 degrees outside. See these red hooks up here above my door? See this red hook right here above my side window? And see this red hook back here above my rear bedroom window? Those are for hanging the fans. So right here I have one box fan in the doorway. Depending on where the sun is on which side of the RV, if this is the shady side and the dining room over here has sun coming through, then by opening up this door and keeping the screen closed and turning this fan to blow air this way, is going to push cooler air throughout the RV. And then the other fan would be in this window, but pointing out to try to keep this middle section really filtered with air and, you know, always having air move through the breezeway. Also, generally speaking, when I go to bed, I do not keep any of the fans up here in the main living area. I just have one fan in the back bedroom with the window open, and that'll just be blowing in cool air on low for me all night, basically right on my face. Uh, fans can be great as long as the outside temperature is under 85, I've noticed. If it's a day like today where it's really hot and muggy, it's nice to be able to plug in. So my RV power cord, which is uh, 30 amp, is plugged into a 30 amp outlet right here. And then I'm able to run the air conditioner inside. In which case, it's just a matter of setting low cool or high cool and the temperature thermostat. This will kick on and off between uh, air conditioning and just normal air to keep it about 70 degrees inside the RV. If I find myself stuck out in the middle of the nowhere in the desert and it's 100 degrees, I can always fire up my generator, my onboard generator, and the cord that's plugged into the outside would just plug into the compartment inside the uh, box in there, and then I can run my air conditioner in the middle of the desert on my own generator, which doesn't work very well as far as fuel consumption, but it is an option. There have certainly been times where I've gone into a store and based on how hot it is, I will keep the windows open 
with the screens and the fans going to keep Jack's cool in here. Obviously, there might be some people asking, aren't you worried about somebody breaking into the window? I mean, it's just a screen. Well, we'll get to that later about how I deal with that. As well as I will fire up the generator and the air conditioner, close all the windows, and keep Jack's with some air conditioning depending on how long I'm going to be gone. But one of the great features about the alarm system, which I will talk about later, is the fact that I have the smart start capability remotely, not with the key. In other words, yes, this will operate the alarm system and stuff and do the smart start if you're in range. But what if I fly back to Washington State and my RV's in Florida for some reason? Well, that's when the smart start app comes in really handy. Just pull up my app here and start the car. Seven seconds after, Now my engine's running. The best part about that is I can do it from anywhere that I have service. There's GPS in my alarm system, which again, we will get to. I just want to talk about how I physically do it. Say I wasn't expecting to be gone this long. Well, here's what you do. So here's what I'll try to do if I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to use the remote start. Before I leave, I will just turn the air conditioner on max and high. That means the next time the engine is started, no matter where I'm at, Air conditioning in an emergency case is going to blow out of all of these vents. And what I've noticed that happens is Jax is smart. He'll come and he'll sit right here on the edge of the couch and just bathe in the air conditioning. Okay, so maybe now you're asking yourself, okay, fine, Eric, but how would you know what the temperature is in your RV remotely? How would you know if you're standing in line or waiting for something at the bank, how would you know to use your Smart Star app to turn on the air conditioning for Jax? And that comes into play this funky little contraption here with the thermometer. Well, here is one of my seven dome camera security cameras, which we will go over later. And here is the contraption I just showed you, which I simply just place right there every time I get out of the RV. And if we look at this screen right here, you can, well, I don't know if you can clearly see it, but I can clearly see it. Okay, so now we've kind of covered most of the keeping cool stuff in the RV. I want to get into some of more of the technical stuff as far as the security cameras and how those work. And then we'll morph, after we get into that, we'll kind of morph into the actual RV security alarm system and how that works remotely as well. But first, let's get into the camera, camera stuff. And remember, I cannot give you every detail possible, but... I can tell you that the brand of security I have came from a kit from Night Owl. It was a Walmart purchase, I think originally $2.99 as a kit with four cheap cameras. The very first thing I did was upgrade those cameras to Sony higher night vision dome style cameras that are vandal proof and what was the other thing? A wide angle. It's got a, um, it's got a 90 degree viewing angle on the cameras. Um, so I replaced all of those. Now, Night Owl out the box already comes with a system to be able to link it with your smartphone. Obviously, it's meant for putting it at your house where you have a network set up so that you can remotely view it. Um, and what you would do is you would download the app. And here I have the app, which shows some of my camera views. These are all live views. So if I double click that one, it brings it up bigger. And you can see me talking to you guys there. Um, so I have to have service on the phone, or I have to have Wi-Fi on the phone in order to uh, remotely monitor these. I will say it comes with a bunch of extra features that I'm not going to get into, like proximity alerts. Um, it'll tell you, you can select different parts of each individual camera screen. If something passes this part, send me a text, send me an alert on the app. It gets really detailed and I don't want to get into that. But Night Owl is already out the box, ready to go to be able to monitor it from everywhere. So how in the heck do I do that if I'm in an RV? Well, first of all, my system is powered through DC power, so it does not need power. It's basically running off solar in my battery bank. It is recording to a one terabyte hard drive, nonstop, 24 hours a day. Um, although it does record events so that you can go back and quickly find any time there was motion in it, if that's all you're looking for. As well as recording to the DVR that I have and viewing it live, it also saves it to the app. I think. 30 days is what it's set up right now. So it is using a lot of memory on my phone as a backup. You know, that's like, basically it's like saying, if someone thought they could come in, pull out all the cameras and take the DVR with them, ooh, nobody's gonna know it was me. Well, no, it's backed up on the phone, just like the DJI app that does all of the stuff you film with your drone and stuff. But again, how do I create a network in a moving vehicle? 
No, I do not have Mobley. You guys, many of you have probably heard of Mobley. It's really popular right now, and I don't understand why. It's still the regular AT&T capped at 22. Not capped, but slowed down. It's useless, okay? And when it's that useless, you can't stream Netflix. You certainly can't upload a video. And if it's based on something like security, do you really want to be unable to use it for like half the month when you go over 22 gigabytes? No. I still go with my AT&T Unlimited Hotspot that I got on eBay. I use between 300 and 4... Oh my gosh, never mind. 486 gigabytes this month. Two days left. So I, I use nearly 500 gigabytes a month on uploading videos. Um, I'm always streaming all of my cameras to the internet, so that probably kills it right there. But I keep this guy charged. This has to stay in the RV in order to work. Um, the DVR itself on the Night Owl needs an Ethernet hardwire connection. Obviously, I can't do that with this. So how did I do that? Let me show you. What I did is I got this cheap Netgear booster, and this is always powered because this inverter, or this plug right here system is from my inverter. This Netgear adapter is then synced with this device here. The Netgear adapter has the Ethernet connection. That is what's hooked in to my Night Owl security system. That's how I'm able to broadcast the cameras, the closed caption TV system to the internet to be able to remotely view it from a source like my phone or something. And it has, I wanna say it has about a 10 second lag. Do I really wanna say that? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It has about a 10 second lag for me. Uh, depending on the Wi-Fi connection though, it can be as low as like two seconds I've seen it as well got an HDMI cord going to my TV so I can switch back and forth and view it there as well as I can view it on my MacBook as well with another app. Unlike this, the Viper security system that I'll get into here in a bit, there is no annual or monthly fee to use the app and access it remotely. I really like that. It really gives me peace of mind. I'm not stuck to my phone when I go out, but it's certainly nice to be able to know that I can look in on Jack's inside, see him sitting right here on the couch or doing something on the floor. I can see the inside. I can see the outside, what's going on, who's moved and what's going on like that. But I'm not paranoid about it. It's just a tool. So that's my... CCTV security system explanation and there's a lot more people on YouTube that might share more information with you. Um, the interface is really easy to use though and I have really not had any problems with it. Some people have complained that it, it goes out at certain times and I just have not had that. It has worked 100% of the time for me. All right, and now we need to talk about the security system, the Viper alarm system, and the add-ons and the extras, and how I've made that possible to be able to do it remotely. I did this back in El Paso, Texas, when I first got the RV. I went into a shop, a local shop, don't remember the name of it, but they're a Viper alarm uh, certified installer. If I tell you the cost of the alarm system, that's, that's kind of tricky because Putting an alarm system in an RV had a bunch of extra add-ons and wirings. The normal cheap install that you're going to get on a vehicle, and especially if you're just paying for like the cheapest one, is going to be the two front doors. Uh, when those open or when your dome light comes on, they basically, that's going to trigger the alarm. Uh, that's not going to cut it in an RV. And so I asked them what the, what the options were and what else we could do. Again, not to go into specifics, but depending on how much extra wiring they have to run to different locations of the RV inside and outside, you're going to have to have pins on every door and every window that you want secured that someone could get in through, um, and other devices like solar panels or bicycles and stuff of that nature. So those costs can rise. I paid $1,300 for my Viper alarm system to be installed. But here's what you need to understand. So. You go to Best Buy, you set your alarm with this thing. As you're walking away, if your alarm goes off, this fog key right here is going to tell you that your alarm's going off. As you step into Best Buy and get farther away, as this gets farther away from the rig that's secured, whatever happens to your alarm system outside, this is not going to tell you. It's not going to tell you, especially if you ride your bike a couple miles away. You're never going to know that your alarm's going off. So what is the point of that really, right? Unless you're right there and unless there's a bunch of people around. What Viper now offers is something called the Smart Start Module, which is a module, it's an add-on to the security system in your vehicle that is also connected to a server. It's basically a cell phone or a Wi-Fi device 
hotspot that's built into the system that creates its own network and broadcasts that out to your app. Hence how I was able to start my vehicle with my app. It doesn't matter if I'm sitting in my vehicle, if I'm in a restaurant, or like I said, if I am halfway across the country or the other end of the country, I can still pull up my app and start my vehicle. Now, I don't know how specific I want to be about this, but the directed smart start app can be very specific. And I have it very customized on here so that if my alarm goes off and I'm sitting at a baseball game or in a restaurant somewhere, I grab my phone, it's going to instantly tell me what happened. Shock sensor triggered. Okay, so something triggered it. Instantly go to my cameras and look. Did somebody just hit me? No. Oh, look, there's a train. Look, there's a semi truck going by. I'll bet you the thing that sent the shock off was the vibrations in the road or a Harley or something, a big motorcycle or something. Otherwise, if I grab my phone and it says rear bedroom window pin, oh my gosh, go to camera three, passenger side rear. Oh my gosh, if there's glass on the road or if you see someone entering your heart, I mean, it can be that specific. And I, luckily, in, in two years, I have not had anything like that serious happen. Every time this has gone off, it's been a shock sensor and it's been nothing to be alarmed about. But at the same time, let's say the first thing I did was go to my camera and for some reason there's some guy sitting right here next to my RV. I'm like, really? Go back to my Viper Smart Start and we'll just do a little panic five second alarm five to seven seconds later and see how he reacts. <laughs> or if you want to, turn on the master alarm. <laughs> the app, I believe, the module itself to add the smart start with the Wi-Fi cellular signal put out, that was an extra $119 to have that installed on the device, as well as the cheapest that they offer right now. If you buy three years of the service, you can get it for about $275. I'm paying $99 a year. And I guess you could break that down and say here's how much it cost a month or that's a ridiculous price. But to me the alarm system is worthless if I can't monitor it and get notifications when I'm far enough away from the RV. So that $100, I will not kid you, is the best $100 a year that I could possibly spend in my life. It combined with the security cameras and being able to view those remotely, it gives me like 99% confidence that my my vehicle is safe, my property is safe, that Jax is safe, that I don't ever have to worry no matter. And you guys have seen me boondock in some crazy spots and leave my RV. There are obviously much more security measures you can take and obviously I'm not going to get into that. I just wanted to share with you the specifics about Night Owl, the specifics about Viper and how you can have that work um, on a cell signal and monitor it. That's how I do it. Um, and it works great for me. I feel really safe and I feel really secure. And I hope this video was helpful for you. If I forgot anything, uh, leave me a comment in the questions below. Leave me a question in the comments below and I'll try to get back with you guys. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.